Last month, the Biden administration announced a plan to give additional shots of COVID vaccines to millions of Americans. And last week, after hashing out the pros and cons of these so-called booster shots, a panel of the FDA's top vaccine experts rejected Biden's more shots for everyone plan and voted only that people 65 and older or high risk individuals be eligible Pfizer, uh, for Pfizer booster doses. Within hours of their decision, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky simply overruled the FDA panel and authorized booster shots for those in high risk transmission environments, including healthcare workers, teachers, and supermarket employees. Confusion over these third shots has been brewing for months, leading to more vaccine hesitation. Let's bring in somebody who can really explain what is going on here. David Dodd is the president and CEO of Geovax Labs. He joins me now to discuss. David, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Let's first have you just react to this decision, the, the, the change that has occurred here. Here is uh, Rochelle Walensky on Friday saying, oh no, she didn't overrule them. It was just close. I want to be very clear that I did not overrule um, an advisory committee. This was a, um, I listened to all of the proceedings of the, of the FDA advisory committee and intently listened to this exceptional group of scientists that publicly and very transparently, transparently deliberated for hours over some of these very difficult questions and where the science um, uh, was. This was a scientific close call. In that situation, um, it was my call to make. What do you make of it? Well, it's it's very rare that the that uh, someone overrules uh, the uh, FDA advisory committees. That's why we have them. They're experts in their field. They make a recommendation, and it's they typically are recommendations that warrant a lot of attention to. You know, the, the CDC recently admitted that 94 percent of the deaths that have been attributed to COVID. Uh, could just as well have been attributed to other conditions, comorbidities. That means instead of 600,000 deaths from COVID-19 in the United States, we've had more like 35,000 if you were to take it from that standpoint. That doesn't mean that there was not some involvement, but it does indicate that we need to be spending a lot more time understanding the pathway of this virus and who really is at such high risk. But David, can you tell me more about that? I mean, I, I've, I'm trying to follow this as closely as I can. I've never heard that the C, you said the CDC says that they think that there were, that, that only 5% of COVID deaths are, were clearly and only COVID. I mean, what, explain that a little more because that, that would be a pretty mind blowing statistic. I, I've certainly not heard that anywhere else. Yeah, there is a, a well. There's a, there's a, a publication that just came out in Toxology Reports, which is a very well respected uh, journal. Uh, it's published by uh, Elsevier, which again is a very respected scientific uh, publisher. It, it was published online on September the 14th, so just a few weeks ago. And the title of the article is "Why Are We Vaccinating Children Against COVID-19." And in that article, it's a scientific article, so one has, and I'm not a scientist, so it's hard to, to follow, but if you find the salient point, you'll see the citation and the reference to when the CDC recently uh, acknowledged that if you were to look at the percentage of the deaths that can be solely attributed to, uh, to COVID-19 versus those that came that could be involved with influenza, other conditions, comorbidities, there are 6% of them that you could clearly attribute to it, which means there are 94% of the 600,000 or thereabout deaths uh, could just as well have been attributed to some other condition. And, and I think this is the type of uh, information that, that we ought to be more broadly discussing. I, I I try to avoid as a business person not being on either side politically, but it does appear that uh, politics is increasingly getting into medicine and science, not just with COVID-19, but in many different areas. But this is one that really can be highlighted. And I'm not surprised you hadn't heard of that because when I mentioned it in a meeting among industry people earlier today, at least half of them had not seen the yeah. article to which I just- I I